Thank you very, thank you very much. Let me, let me thank uh, Mr. Bing for a very gracious, gracious introduction. And it's certainly my, my pleasure to be with all of you uh, this evening. Uh, to the uh, faculty and staff and all those affiliated with the College of Healthcare Professions, uh, certainly to all of the, uh, let's say, relatives, parents, wives, husbands, friends of these graduates, and most especially, and the reason why I am here, uh, to the graduates of 2017 of the College Healthcare Professions, uh, I congratulate and salute all of you. Give them a strong hand. Let me, let me thank you all for having me to be with you. Uh, I fully recognize uh, that this is not my moment. Uh, you're not here to look at me or just to hear me. Uh, you're here to be with your loved ones this evening, and I understand that. And so I'm not going to hold you very long. If, if you'll just bear with me for about an hour and a half, we'll get through this for rel relatively quickly. But let me just say to you that, uh, as a mayor of this city, I wanted to be here when I heard and read about some of the stories of some of the graduates uh, in this class, in fact, all of you, and the fact that some of you are graduating from a college for the first time in your family. Uh, I can relate to that. I have the privilege of being the mayor of the most diverse city in the United States of America. There is no other city that is as diverse as this one. The reality is, is that we are more diverse than a New York City, LA, San Francisco, Chicago, Philadelphia, Washington, DC. One of four Houstonian is foreign born, one of four. We speak 142 different languages right here in this city. People practice different religions. They come from all walks of life. We are highly diverse. And because of that diversity, we are a great, great city. And I've always said and will continue to say, we are a welcoming city in the city of Houston. We don't build walls in this city, we build relationships. I also want you to know, I want you to know as you prepare to graduate and to your relatives and friends who are here, uh, that in this city, we don't profile people HPD, the Houston Police Department, don't stop people to ask where they come from. We are not ICE. We will never be ICE. We, we just simply believe that if you are living in this city, you ought to have the right to achieve the American dream, and I salute all of you for reaching that dream. That is just, that is just who we are. Now, let me just say to all of the graduates, and what I've said to myself many, many times on, on this journey of life, uh, that you have, to find, you have to find your purpose. You have to find your meaning. And you have to decide why is it that the good Lord has placed you on this, on this earth. I told my daughter, I told my daughter, look, your mom and your dad may be lawyers, but that doesn't mean you have to be a lawyer. You have to find your purpose and your place. My daughter decided she didn't want to be a lawyer. She decided she wanted to be in health care. And she decided that that was her mission, that was her purpose, that was her calling. And today, uh, she's now director of a, of a nonprofit health care, health and wellness center. I'm so very, very proud of her. She is doing it her way. She's following her dreams. And the same thing I would say to you all, to all of the graduates, I commend you on your achievement on tonight, but just recognize, and I've, I know you can attest to this, life is not fair. Life can be difficult. Life will have challenges. People will still try to get in your way and tell you what you can't do. There were some who say, okay, now that you have graduated from the College of Healthcare Professions, what does that mean? Um, but try to just recognize uh, that this is one step leading to another, and that there's a purpose for you. Find your purpose and find your meaning. Let me leave two, two, two true stories with you, and I'm going to my seat. 
There was this, this student that graduated from a high school. True story, true story. The student graduated from a high school, and his parents decided they wanted to give their child a graduation gift. Now, they didn't come from a, he didn't come from a family like mine. He came from a very affluent family. So his parents decided they were going to give their son a trip all around the world. And they, uh, they sent someone to be with their son. True story. The son took off along with this uh, companion, and they went to these third world undeveloped countries. And when they got there, they discovered that these third world, the people living in these third world undeveloped countries were living in a situation far worse than they had been accustomed to. And so the son, the son was so convicted by what he saw, the living conditions, lack of housing, no medical facilities, no health care delivery system. So the son ended up giving everything that the parents had given to him in terms of monetary resources. He gave everything to these people in these undeveloped countries. And the father had given the son this book to go along with him. It was like a tablet. And so the son gave everything he had away. And he took out the, the book, and he wrote at the back of the book, Father, no reserves. He stayed there. The servant, I mean, he was attending to the needs of the, to these individuals because he decided, you know, I found my purpose. This is why I'm over here. I came over here to travel, but these are people whose lives are far worse than my own. I want to stay and help these people out. And so he and the companion, they stayed there. And the son got a little ill, and the companion told the son, we need to go back to the United States. The health care delivery system is not that good over here. But the son looked at the companion and said, this is my purpose. I can help these people over here. I want to help them. I want to commit my, my life to improving their conditions. So the son picked up the book that the father had given him, and he wrote notation number two, Father, no turning back. After another two or three years passed, the son's situation got worse, and unfortunately, because he could not, he did not get the medical attention that he needed, the son died. The companion called the parents, true story, called the, called the parents. They came over to the third world country, and while they were collecting all of their son's possessions, the companion gave to the father this book that the father had given to the son some five, six years earlier. And at the back of the book, when the father was looking through it, he saw three notations instead of two. The first notation said, Father, Dad, when you're reading this book, I want you to understand everything that you and Mom gave to me, I have shared it with somebody else. Every single thing you've given to me. So, Father, notation number one, no reserves. I have nothing left. Notation number two said to the dad, Father, when the road got rough, when I wasn't feeling too well, I still stayed the course because I found my purpose. I found my reason for living. And so, Dad, Father, notation number two, I did not turn back. But it was notation number three that really captured the dad because notation number three said, Father, everything you and mom gave to me, I've given it, I've shared it with somebody else. And Father, when the road got rough, I did not turn back. No turning back. But notation number three said, Father, Mom, when you're reading this book, understand from your son, I have no regrets. Let me just say to you, as you go through life, when you leave here, go to your respective jobs, living in this world, live and work in such a way that at the end of the day, you can look yourself in the mirror and say, I have no regrets. The second story, and I'm through, 
This one is a true story. I didn't know that student that graduated from high school or his parents, but this person I do know, and I know this person extremely well. It just happens to be my mom. You know, when I grew up in Acres Home, the north side, the faux faux, you know, Neither one of my parents graduated from high school. My dad didn't graduate from high school. My mom didn't graduate from high school. Like Mr. Pink said, my dad died of cancer when I was 13 years old. We didn't have anybody's private health care insurance. When the Turners got sick, my mom and dad did the best they could to keep us going. And when it got real bad, we ended up at some emergency room. So my dad died when I was 13. My mom, who did not graduate from high school, my mom was this maid that worked at the old Rice Hotel downtown. And when my dad died, my mom ended up having to raise nine kids all by herself. I call her the CEO of the Turner household. Because look, anytime a mother is trying to raise nine kids all by herself, she deserves to be called the CEO. And so, it was my mom. It was my mom who never learned how to drive. My mom would get us ready to go to school. And after we caught the last bus, my mom would catch the very next bus and go downtown, clean other people's rooms and clean their bathrooms. And then we'd catch another bus in the evening, would come home and get her kids ready for school the very next day. My mom sacrificed day in and day out. When I got ready to go to law school, I needed someone to sign the loan papers. There were no teachers, no doctors, no lawyers, no engineers in the Turner household. I only knew one person who worked very hard and believed in paying her bills, and that was that maid, my mom. And so I went to my mother and I asked my mother if she would sign the loan papers that would enable me to go to Harvard Law School in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And so when I took the papers to her and I said, we call her Ma, I said, Ma, will you just sign, put your name right here at, on the bottom of these papers here? She said, Sylvester, what are you asking me to sign? I said, oh, just some papers that I need you to sign. Just sign right here, that's all you got to do. So she said, well, what am I signing? I said, these are just some loan papers for me to go to law school. She said, some loan papers, how much is the loan? And when I told my mama how much that, that loan was, this Christian woman who believed in going to church every Sunday said some words that I just didn't know that my mom even knew. <laughs> and then she said, Sylvester, I've got many other kids that I'm trying to take care of. You need to find a school a lot closer and a lot cheaper. But I reminded my mom, as I was growing up, I told her, you said I can be whatever the good Lord wanted me to be. I just need your help in signing these loan papers. I went to her the second time. My mom said no. I went to her the third time, but this time, I took a different approach. I said, Ma, you and I need to pray because the Lord must not be talking to you right. So let, let me pray for you and let me see if I can get a prayer through. True story. And I proceeded to pray and I said, Lord, you know my dad died when I was 13. The only one that I got left is my mom. And I'm asking you to touch my mom's heart and for her to sign these papers, if it be your will, to give her child an opportunity to achieve his dream. At the end of the prayer, my mom decided, Sylvester, I'm gonna sign these papers. I'm gonna wish you the very best. But understand, life is not fair. And the road often is, a, is mighty, mighty rough but I'm going to trust that you will stay focused and do what you need to do in order for things to get a little bit better. 
when I went to law school, based on the, the fact that my mom signed those loan papers, three years later when I got ready to graduate, can you imagine the one person that I wanted to be at that graduation? It was that maid who didn't graduate from high school, who signed the papers that enabled me to go to law school. And when I got to that graduation, I don't care how I am, however many people were in the audience, I was able to find my mom in that audience. I want you to know, because this maid, this mother who sacrificed for me, I'm now standing before you as the mayor of the fourth largest city in the United States of America, and I give her all the glory. My message is very simple. My message is very simple. Tonight, you not only graduate for yourself, you're graduating with a lot for a lot of others who prayed for you, helped you along the way. Don't you dare stop from where you are. If by chance along the way, you get knocked down, learn how to pull yourself right back up. If you don't get where you wanna go quick, fast, and in a hurry, you just stay the course. Because if God is on your side, you will not fail to meet your destination. And so on your mark, get set, and let's go. And I wish you the very best as from the mayor of the city of Houston. Thank you for having me this evening.